Let's learn in detail about Chiari malformations. My name is Dr. Raishwarya. Let's look at the relevant anatomy. Let's take the T2 sagittal section. We see the clivus, midbrain, pons and the fourth ventricle. And this is the superior recess of the fourth ventricle. This is the inferior recess of the fourth ventricle, also called as obex. This is the exact midline section and this prominence behind the medulla is called as nucleus gracilis. Coming to cerebellar fissures in the midline, this is the primary fissure of cerebellum. The lobe of cerebellum just below the primary fissure is called as the declive. And the tip of the fourth ventricle protruding within the cerebellum is called fastigium of the fourth ventricle. In the true midline section, a line drawn from fastigium to declive is called as fastigium declive line. And 50% of the vermis of cerebellum should lie below the fastigium declive line. That is a normal anatomy. Moving on to slightly parasagittal sections, this is the horizontal fissure of cerebellum just beneath the primary fissure of cerebellum and we can see the cerebellar tonsils. In suspected cases of posterior fossa anomalies, we calculate an angle called tegmentovermian angle. The angle is calculated between two lines. The first line is drawn along the dorsal surface of brainstem which is transecting through the nucleus gracilis. This is the line 1. And the line through is drawn along the ventral surface of vermis. Normal angle is supposed to be close to 0 degrees. In this image it is 9.55 degrees. 0 to 18 degrees is the normal range and more than 18 degrees is seen in posterior fossa malformations like dandy walker malformation. Moving on to actual discussion of Chiari malformations. There are three types of Chiari malformations, 1, 2 and 3 and the other types are considered as variants. Those are Chiari 0, Chiari 1.5 and Chiari 4. We will be discussing these in detail and these in brief. Moving on to Chiari 1 malformation, patient can present with symptoms like Valsalva induced headache, progressive scoliosis and abnormal temperature and vibratory sense. The last two symptoms are because of the syrinx formation in the spinal cord. On imaging, we can see the tonsillar descent below the macrase or the foramen magnum line. More than 5 mm below the foramen of magnum is considered significant. The shape of the tonsils become pointed or peg-like shaped with angled folia. There will be effaced CSF spaces. Spinal cord may show syrinx or hydrosyringomyelia. Tonsillar descent can be seen in other cases also. Normal low-lying tonsils will be rounded with normal folia and normal CSF flow. Acquired tonsillar herniation can be seen in cases of raised intracranial tension or intracranial hypotension. Coming to Chiari 2 malformation, it's more complex. The pathology is when posterior neuropole fails to close, ventricles fails to expand and the posterior fossa structures are herniated through foramen of magnum. The open posterior neuropole forms the myelomeningocele with associated posterior fossa abnormalities. This can be visualized on antenatal ultrasound. There are classical signs like banana shaped cerebellum, lemon shaped skull and myelomeningocele can be seen on spine screening. MR imaging is the modality of choice. We can see small posterior fossa. We can see inferiorly displaced brainstem medullary spur, compressed fourth ventricle appearing as soda straw fourth ventricle. There can be crowding of foramen magnum, corpus callosal agenesis can be present with prominent massa intermedia. These were the posterior fossa abnormalities and the same patient showed presence of myelomeningocele. So combined together, we gave a diagnosis of Chiari 2 malformation. 
Other associations to look for are heterotopias, neural abnormalities, vertebral anomalies, hydrocephalus and syrinx. In Kyrie 3 malformation, there will be caudally displaced brainstem with a small posterior fossa just like Kyrie 2 malformation. But instead of myelomeningocele, we have a low occipital or cervical bony defect leading to a cephalocele. Again, MRI is the modality of choice and we can see on T1 sagittal images a small posterior fossa, a cephalocele with herniated meninges. Let's discuss in brief about the Kyrie variants. Kyrie 0 is just hydrocyringomyelia plus foramen magnum crowding with normal position of tonsils. In Kyrie 1.5 malformation, we can see the descent of tonsils and the brainstem and the fourth ventricle causing crowding of foramen magnum associated with syrinx formation in 50% of the cases but no myelomeningocele. In Kyrie 4 malformation, there will be primary cerebellar agenesis with or without a flat pons. This is another entity called Kyrie 5 malformation which includes Kyrie 2 plus occipital or high cervical myelomeningocele. Thank you for watching our videos. Please do subscribe and share. Our Instagram handle is radiologydoodles.